In this video, I wanna have a little fun by sharing my 10 favorite album covers. Many of these covers have some interesting stories, so today, let's judge a record by its cover. Hey, what's up, I'm Jason, and this channel is for vinyl lovers who wanna find something new to listen to, purchase, or avoid. I focus on vinyl, but everyone is welcome. All right, to the best of my abilities, the records I'm covering today are in chronological order, and while they include some of the usual suspects, I also tried to include one or two surprises, so let's jump right in. Number one on the list, the 1956 Elvis Presley debut. I only recently realized that these recordings go back to as early as 1954. I finally was able to snag this first pressing, so you know I had to show it off a little bit because I cannot stop admiring this thing. This cover is ranked number 40 on Rolling Stone's list of the 100 greatest album covers of all time. The photograph of Elvis on this cover was taken at Fort Homer Hesterly Armory in Tampa, Florida on July 31st, 1954. So, last week I'm reading up on this record cover and discovered that the photo was shot by Popsy Randolph, a photographer who shot many musicians going back to the 40s. Uh, and then this morning, as I'm doing more research, I learned that this front cover is not shot by Popsy. The actual photographer is William Robertson. The Popsy credit attributed to the album only applies to this series of photos featured on the back cover. And hopefully this isn't still in dispute. This is one of the most iconic rock and roll photos of all time. We need to make sure we credit the right dude. Number two on the list, the great Eric Dolphy's 1964 album, Out to Lunch, an avant-garde jazz masterpiece. The album cover was designed by Reed Miles, featuring this photo of a will be back sign displayed in a shop window showing a seven-handed clock. What I wanna know is, was this staged or was this just randomly hanging in that window like that? I really want one of these seven-handed clock signs now. I wonder if you can snag these on Amazon. Or maybe it's a, a future do-it-yourself project for me. I'll hang it up right back there. The classic 1967 album by Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experienced, weighs in at number three. Hendrix was unhappy with the cover art for the UK edition and solicited photographer Carl Ferris to create a more psychedelic cover for the US release. It seems like Jimi was always getting screwed on his album cover art for some reason. Uh, no matter how explicit he was about what he wanted, the labels just did their own thing every time. Come on, man, it's Jimi Hendrix. Can we get this guy the album covers that he wants, please? But this is one of the great psychedelic albums of all time with a fantastic psychedelic cover. You cannot look at this cover without hearing. <laughs> Number four on the list is this earth-shattering 1967 Beatles record, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. The cover image won the Grammy Award for Best Album Cover, Graphic Arts, and the idea was to show a new band surrounded by fans after a performance. This is such an iconic cover. Here's the back. Beautiful, beautiful gatefold there of the Beatles. And this cover is so iconic, as a matter of fact, that it was copied and parodied endlessly. But one particular parody that is my favorite is Frank Zappa's Mothers of Invention album cover art for We're Only In It For The Money. Zappa's art director photographed a collage for the album cover, which parodied the Beatles album. And Zappa says the parody was a direct negative of the Sgt. Pepper's cover. Why doesn't it appear on the front and instead it appears here on the inside? Here's the inside. That would be the front cover depicting the Beatles. Iconic album, then you got the back cover there. And the inner gatefold here on the outside instead. So why was it transposed? Well, Zappa phoned Paul McCartney seeking permission for the parody and apparently McCartney told him, it's an issue with our business managers. And Zappa said something like, Aren't the artists supposed to tell their business managers what to do? They could never get a deal done, and Verve, in fear of being sued by Capital, was like, sorry, we can't do it. So, 
They decided to invert the cover artwork, placing the parody cover in the interior of the jacket. Zappa, of course, was not happy with the decision, but in recent years, the album has been reissued with the intended front cover. Both Sgt. Pepper's and We're Only In It For The Money are great albums and possess fantastic covers. Next up is Big Brother and The Holding Company's Cheap Thrills. This is a fantastic album. I feel like this album might be relegated to the dollar bin in some people's minds, but for me, even more than the incredible Janis Joplin vocals, this album is just a killer psychedelic rock album. The cover was drawn by underground cartoonist Robert Crumb. It was commissioned after a photo of the group naked in bed together was vetoed by Columbia Records. Also, the band wanted the album's title to be Sex, Dope, and Cheap Thrills. But again, Columbia Records was not having it. Come on, man. Number six on the list is a classic album by a classic band and the cover art was created by a classic artist. Rolling Stone selected Oxo Moxoa as having the eighth best album cover of all time. That's not why I picked it. I didn't know anything about the Rolling Stones rankings until after I made my selections, but this cover was designed by Rick Griffin. Griffin is an incredible artist who designed many iconic album covers and posters and here are a few other covers by Griffin, just for fun. He did the cover art for Quicksilver Messenger Service's debut album, The Grateful Dead's Wake of the Flood, Reckoning, and Without a Net. The artwork for Oxo Moxoa was adopted from a concert poster painting for The Grateful Dead. The bottom portion depicts death, rebirth, and the cycle of life with fertility symbols, and Egyptian-based imagery, while the top depicts a sun which doubles as an egg being fertilized. Oxo Moxoa is a great album and one of my all-time favorite record covers. So this one is a real treat. This is a very rare bootleg Zappa album from, I think, 1970. And the reason I believe that is because, check this out, this is an X library copy. Can you believe that? This was in a Texas library and people would check this out, go home, listen to it, and then return it to the library. There is so much about that that's just cool and odd to me. This record is near mint condition, so I can't imagine it was checked out much, if ever. But anyway, check out this cover. Very much in the style of the old EC comic books like Tales from the Crypt, or even probably more accurately, the work of Bernie Wrightson, who drew comics during the 60s, very much in the style of those old horror comics. This is just so damn cool. Check out the front. I mean, you got this lady on here dropping the candy. You got Frank at the door. Of course, you got the barking pumpkin right here. And the, the back is almost cooler. This is from one of my favorite eras of Frank's music, but it is a bootleg and doesn't sound particularly great. But still, I mean, isn't that cover worth the price of admission? Okay, number eight on the list is a very, very iconic album cover. The Rolling Stones, Sticky Fingers from 1971. Original artwork conceived by Andy Warhol and photographed and designed by members of his art collective, The Factory. It has a working zipper that opens to reveal underwear fabric. This cover was extremely expensive to produce and has a tendency to damage the vinyl record contained inside, so later reissues featured just the outer photograph of the jeans without a zipper. This is such an incredible concept and an album that you need to be very careful about how you store it so that you don't damage the record inside or the record leaning right next to it. All right, I have a history with this record that I'll cover in a future video, but here is Kiss's 1974 debut self-titled album uh, with this iconic cover, which shows the group positioned in such a way to resemble the Beatles with the Beatles album cover. Ace Fraley wanting to impress the other members of Kiss dyed his hair with silver hairspray. And according to Peter Chris, photographer Joel Brodsky thought Kiss were literally clowns and wanted to place balloons behind the group for the shoot. The photographer denies this, but it's 
freaking hilarious if that's actually true. Where's that album cover? Can we get a reissue with balloons in the background, please? Number 10 on the list is a little album I would never have heard of if it wasn't for the Omaha introvert discussing it on her YouTube channel some time back. This is The Sounds 1981 album from The Lion's Den, dude. I've done that every single time. <laughs> From the lion's mouth, this cover artwork was taken from the 1872 painting, Daniel in the Lion's Den. Daniel in the Lion's Den tells of how the biblical Daniel is saved from lions by the God of Israel. And this one is the best depiction of that tale I have ever seen. It's just beautiful. Do we have time for a bonus cover? Sure, why not? Here's the super iconic cover for Van Halen's 1984 album. One of my favorite album covers of all time with the kid or cherub with the angel wings and the smokes and the 50s style hairdo is just so cool. There's a whole story behind this cover, which I'll link in the description if you're interested, but basically the artist Margot Nahas was commissioned to do the album cover depicting four chrome women dancing. She refused for whatever reason, but her husband took her portfolio to Van Halen and in the portfolio was this painting. And obviously the band liked it so much, they decided to use it for their iconic 1984 album cover. You can buy prints of this cover art from vanhalen1984.com and I've been so tempted to buy one. Margo, if you're watching, if you send me a print, I swear to God, I'll include your link in my videos from now until the end of my YouTube career, I promise. So there you have it, 11. The numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. 11, 11, most 11. Amps go up to 10. Exactly. 11 of my favorite album covers in my collection. What are some of your favorite covers? I'm sure there's hundreds that I left out. Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel more than you know, and you just might win something cool. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next.